The Serial Peripheral Interface, or SPI configuration mode, is supported for Vertex 5, Vertex 6, Spartan 3E, and Spartan 6 FPGAs. This configuration mode allows the FPGA to configure itself from an industry standard SPI flash PROM. The FPGA generates a clock signal and drives a command to the PROM. The PROM then responds to the appropriate data. This data is loaded serially and thus is not as fast a configuration scheme. In Vertex FPGAs, the FPGA requires the vendor select signals, that is the VS, which is 3 bits wide. These bits are used by the PROM to determine which vendor's SPI flash PROM is being used and which commands to issue that are appropriate for that vendor. However, if you are targeting a Spartan 6 device, these signals are not needed since the first command code issued is always recognized. Also note that Spartan 6 also supports 2-bit and 4-bit data lines. The commands for the SPI operations are vendor specific, therefore it is useful for you to make sure that you are using a supported SPI flash PROM. However, most devices will use the common commands supported. Check the device datasheet for a list of currently supported PROMs. Currently, vendors include mnemonics, Spansion, Winbond, and Atmel. Users should plan on selecting a flash PROM that has sufficient size to contain the FPGA's entire bitstream. Refer to the configuration user guide for your device family to find the size of the bitstream for your density of FPGA. You should also be aware that if you daisy chain multiple FPGAs in this configuration scheme, your flash PROM will need to be big enough to contain all of the bitstreams in that chain. Likewise, this is a popular configuration for designers that want to load a single FPGA with different bitstreams at different times while their application is running. This reconfiguration is referred to as multi-boot applications and should be planned sufficiently so you can choose a SPI flash PROM that is sufficiently large enough to accommodate all the necessary bitstreams. If you're building an embedded application, it is also possible to store your software code in the flash PROMs as well. So likewise, plan on choosing a sufficiently large enough PROM to store your software. Note that the available SPI flash PROMs use a single 3.3 volt supply voltage. All of the FPGA SPI flash interface signals are within the specific I.O. banks. So consequently, the supply voltage for that I.O. bank must also be 3.3 to match the SPI flash PROM. This implies that any I.O. pins assigned by the user into the I.O. bank must also be 3.3 volt compatible. Spartan 6 is 3.3 volt compatible, however, Vertex 6 is not. This means that if you're targeting Vertex 6, you will need to build the external interface circuitry if you want to target this configuration scheme. For more information on building this interface circuitry, refer to the Xilinx Solutions database. The majority of SPI flash PROM vendors do not yet build a SPI flash PROM that is compatible with Vertex 6, but check with your vendor for availability. In BPI mode, the FPGA configures from a standard parallel NOR flash PROM. The BPI configuration interface is primarily designed to support standard parallel NOR flash PROMs. The interface supports both byte wide and byte wide half word by 8 by 16 PROMs. The BPI interface also functions with Xilinx parallel platform flash PROMs. The BPI interface can work with other asynchronous memories that use a similar SRAM style interface, such as SRAM, NVRAM, E squared PROM, EPROM, or MASTROM. As an FYI, a NAND flash memory is a different technology. FPGAs do not configure directly from NAND flash memories. Note that the flash device can also be used in embedded software applications where it may be necessary to store a system software in a flash device, as well as the FPGA's bitstream. In an embedded application, such as one targeting the PowerPC or a MicroBlaze processor, the platform flash can store the application code. Then after configuring the FPGA, the FPGA can transfer the software from the platform flash to an off-chip memory, usually an SDRAM. The software code is then executed from the SDRAM. FPGAs support two versions of BPI configuration. BPI up starts configuring the FPGA starting from flash address 0 
and automatically increments the memory addresses. This is the most popular mode and most likely the primary mode to be supported in future FPGAs. The other version, called BPI Down, starts configuring the FPGA from the highest memory location and automatically decrements the memory addresses. This addressing flexibility allows the FPGA to share the parallel flash prom with an external or embedded processor. Depending on the specific processor architecture, the processor may boot either from the top or bottom of the memory. This allows the user to maximize the use of their flash device by allowing the software code to be stored in the same flash device as the bitstream. Note that BPI down is not supported in Spartan 6. There are a number of supported NOR flash memories that are currently supported, including mnemonics and expansion. Also note that you should check the user guide for your FPGA's uncompressed bitstream size. This will help you determine which NOR flash prom is right for you. Now let's wrap up this module with a summary. Field programmable gate arrays are usually configured on PowerUp from an external data source. SPI and BPI are the simplest configuration modes and take the least effort to debug. This is because all the configuration control logic is stored inside the FPGA or external memory device. Slave configuration modes take the most effort to debug because they require the user to build their own configuration control logic. JTAG access enables much easier testing and debugging of your prototype and while your system is in production. It is always a good idea to support a JTAG configuration scheme when building your system in case you need to debug your design later, for whatever reason. There are some very useful resources available to you on support.zonix.com. Now to help you learn more about your device's configuration scheme, go to our website again xilinx.com or support.xilinx.com or from the ISC software you can just click on help and select Xilinx on the web and select a device family. From here you should see various documentation categories. Then select either configuration user guide. These documents will provide even more detailed information about all the topics we've just covered here. To learn more about the Xilinx Platform Flash Excel device and its supported configuration mode, refer to its user guide. This can be accessed in the same way. To learn more about the roles of Impact, PromGen, and BitGen utilities, review their sections in the Command Line Tool Users Guide. There is also more information available about the Platform Cable USB 2. It has its own user guide and data sheet. We want to mention that the installation guide, that is UG344, has additional information about troubleshooting its setup. If you use this cable, and many users do, be sure to download this document in case you have trouble setting it up. If you would like to evaluate BPI programming for the ML605 or Spartan 601 demo boards, there is a tutorial that is available on the evaluation kit page. It will give you practice preparing and setting up for configuration targeting both of these new demo boards. You should also check out the configuration problem solver. This utility walks you through the configuration debugging process and helps customers debug their own configuration problems. While this utility is very helpful, we don't want to discourage any of our customers from contacting the hotline or submitting a web case with their configuration problems. We just find that many customers would rather help themselves. So give it a try and let us know if you have any questions. If you would like to see what other courses we offer or what other free REL's are available, we encourage you to go to the Xilinx education link you see here. I would also like to mention again that there are architecture modules available that discuss the basics of Xilinx's newest devices. You may find this useful, especially if you want to learn more about the device differences. Again, my name is Frank Nelson. You've been listening to the Basic FPGA Configuration REL Part 1. Be sure and listen to Part 2. And again, thanks for listening, and thanks for your business.